Steady on, fella. Steady on. <laughs> Why is he here, Luther? Maybe Theo doesn't want us anymore. Maybe he's going to give us the boot. <laughs> Not to worry, Belfry. <laughs> the mud's done for now. You watch old Theo give him the boot. <laughs> Not to worry, fella. Your family now. You are loved. Well, what do you know? Come on, Belfry. Lads, I'd like you to meet the newest member of our family. I've just adopted him. Adopted? His name is Bumper. I just got him at the pound. Saved him from the long walk. Long walk? <gasps> oh, my! <laughs> Why don't you lads show Bumper around the house while I get him something to eat? He's got to be kidding. Yikes! Hurry! Come on, Belfry, run! <laughs> we all want to belong to a family that cares for us, don't we? We want to know that we are loved unconditionally and that we are secure in that love. Did you know that it's God's desire that we belong to his family? It doesn't matter what your family pedigree is. It isn't determined by your place in society. It makes no difference the color of your skin. When we believe in Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father adopts us into His family. Let's take a look at adoption in biblical times. on the streets of ancient Rome was certainly not easy for a homeless orphan. Basic needs like clothing and food were not taken for granted. Finding a crust of bread would be considered a great treasure. One of our greatest needs is to know that we belong to a loving family. Of knowing that there is someone who is there to protect us and care for us. Someone who will love us unconditionally. 
Sadly, there are many in the world who do not belong to such a family. Perhaps they are orphans, without father, mother, brothers or sisters. Perhaps they are elderly, alone, isolated from society. There are others, however, who are neither orphans nor elderly. They are those without children. The Bible says that children are a gift from the Lord, whether they are boys or girls. But in Roman society, it was important to have a son, because it was through a son that the family name and property would continue. Oftentimes, a king or ruler might adopt a nephew or a trusted slave to secure his rule and to preserve the royal line. In fact, several of Rome's leaders were actually adopted for this reason. Adoption was a legal transaction in Roman times. A price was paid and the title of sonship was recorded by the civil authorities. But adoption was much more than just a legal transaction. The adopted son would become a member of the family. He would be fed and clothed, just as any natural born child would be cared for by loving parents. The new parents would often hold a banquet to celebrate their new son, where the boy would be presented to friends of the family. It would be a joyous occasion. This is my son, the father would say proudly. He now bears my name. He now receives all of the rights and privileges of my family and is heir to all that I own. Welcome him. The Apostle Paul referred to adoption several times in his letters to illustrate a believer's relationship with our Heavenly Father. It makes no difference if someone is a boy or a girl, slave or free, the Father adopts everyone who puts his or her faith in his Son, Jesus Christ. They become God's precious children. Nothing can separate us from our Father's unconditional love. Nothing. We are secure in His Son, Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Go outside and look at the pretty flowers. There's a good doggy. And let that be the last we see of him. Got the brain of a tick. Well, what do you know? The big log saved our lives. <laughs> <laughs> You know, mates, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Are we really adopted, Luther? You bet. Leo must really love us then, huh? He sure does. Does that mean that Pompa's my little brother? Yeah, I suppose so. 